All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Bone Zone. This is a really cool one. You can tell because it's kind of rosy looking. It looks kind of silvery, but it's not silver. It's that iridescent color. That's a pure copper bell. So you see the bell there, how it's really shiny. Carbon fiber slides. Now those are really cool. All right, so today we are going to be talking band instruments and what the heck are they made out of. We're going to be talking tubas, trombones, trumpets, baritones, French horns. Don't have that one, but I have a lot more instruments than I thought now that I set these up. I might be a hoarder. But anyways, we're going to be talking about that today. Yeah, so what are they made out of? What's going on? Why does the lead jazz trumpet player, why does his trumpet uh, look different from my, my yellow uh, rusty looking trumpet? Because I'm an old poor sop. Well, we're going to be talking about that in this video. We're going to be asking a couple questions such as, let's see here. How can you tell what your instrument is made of? What about the silver instruments? What are the pistons, the rotaries, what are they made of? What's going on with my slide? What's that? What's going on there? Mouthpieces, engravings, I'm going to talk about some uncommon types of materials used to make the instruments. Some high-end stuff, some low-end stuff. But before I get ahead of myself, before we get too into detail, uh, we need to take a look at a couple of these instruments. So let's head on over to the shop and check a couple of them out. All right, so I just wanted to do a quick comparison here. So these are all different uh, type brass instruments. So this here is a silver coronet. Now it's still brass, but it's silver plated. So that's what that looks like. This here is a brass, lacquered brass mellophone, marching band instrument. This here, this is a really cool one. This is a Reynolds uh, copper bass trombone bell. You don't see these too often, but you uh, I've seen a couple of bass trombones like this. You see a few trombones here and there, but they're not super common. But we had one here, so I figured I would, I would show it off. And then this here is a lacquered brass instrument too. Kind of different from the mellophone because it's a little darker. It kind of looks like gold. What that is, is uh, this is a con trombone. What that is, is a dyed lacquer made to look a little more gold. So you'll see these on old trombones sometimes, old instruments. They don't really do it too much anymore, but uh, kind of a cool look. These are just some instruments we're working on. So what are all of these brass instruments mostly made of? Well, you guessed it, copper and zinc. It's an alloy made up of copper and zinc, the most common being a yellow brass bell, which is something like 65% copper, and the rest is zinc and, you know, maybe a little bit of other stuff, depending on what the manufacturer wants, but for the most part, copper and zinc. And that's what brass is. That's what almost everybody's uh, musical instrument is made out of in the brass instrument world. Now, what about silver? So if I showed you a silver instrument, you're going to say, that does not look like a brass instrument. Was this guy crazy? Was he out of his mind no it's still a brass instrument and it is still made of brass it's just silver plated so it'll start out as brass and then they'll use a plating process which i don't know exactly how complicated it is but they plate it with a very thin layer of silver so it's still brass it's just silver plated so this is what happens if a silver gets tarnished so much it almost is uh, that iridescent color gunmetal blue. Gun blue right so for the most part your instrument is made of brass there are other metals on your instrument though and we'll get to that in a second but is every instrument made of mostly brass <laughs> no 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 <laughs> there are slightly uncommon types of instruments for example in our shop we get a lot of nickel french horns that come through there are uh, solid nickel instruments a little bit less common there are sterling silver bells so pure silver bells usually uh usually on older instruments uh but you see that every once in a while now and those are pretty cool they the old ones usually have killer engravings on them on really high-end instruments you'll see bronze bells 
models, you'll see that every once in a while. If you ever see those white sousaphones walking around or marching around, those are fiberglass sousaphones and they're really lightweight. That's why they use them. Gold plated instruments, you see those every once in a while. It's almost like a deeper yellow color. Uh, those are out there. Those are pretty high end usually. Some of the old instruments will have silver with uh, mixed with gold plating. That's a really cool, that's a really cool look. I always enjoy working on those and polishing them up. They always polish up really nice. There are a lot of different instrument manufacturers out there and a lot of them have experimented in trying to use different materials to make the instrument. For example, so that Reynolds bass trombone that you saw in the shop, that uh, I'm not 100% sure, but it's it's not pure copper, I don't think. It's just a very high copper content, and you don't see that very often. It was pretty cool, though. That was pretty cool to have in the shop. So some really uncommon types of materials that you'll see out there. Uh, they're pretty rare. There's Khan was making a, it was called a Coprion or Coprion bell, and that is pure copper. So that was like basically they had a mandrel and they electroplated copper and made a bell out of that. So that that's a pure copper bell. On YouTube, I've seen wooden trombone bells. Those are kind of cool. I don't know that anyone ever uses them, but it's kind of cool. The P-Bones and P-Trumpets, they all use plastic. I don't know what kind of plastic, it's just plastic. In the grand scheme of things, the, the P-Instruments, the P-Bones and the P-Trumpets haven't been around for a long time. Uh, they're pretty cool. They actually play pretty well, but I would never use them in a professional setting, but cool nonetheless. And then kind of, uh, kind of the new kid on the block is these carbon fiber instruments. In our shop sometimes, we get people with a carbon fiber bell. They're super light, they're uh, really strong, they're really cool. But even more impressive, the carbon fiber slides. Now those are really cool. They're extremely light, they're extremely durable, and they're extremely expensive. <laughs> but they are incredible. They have their own little problems, but when you're using the slide, it's like it's like air. It's like there's nothing there. Those are really cool. So those are some uncommon types of materials used to make the instrument. Now, speaking of slides, is a good segue. So let's talk about what's uh, in slides and I'll get up and I'll kind of demonstrate to you guys what what's going on with the trombone slides. All right, so what is a trombone slide made out of? Well, let's take a look here. So I just, I just had this slide clean, but if you'll look here, this isn't the best lighting, but if you'll look here, this is the outer slide, and that looks pretty yellow. So that is, yes, correct. You got it right. Great job, you can have a cookie. It's brass. So that's the outer slide. Now the inner slide, now that kind of looks like silver, but it's not silver. This is actually, so this looks like a nickel slide with chrome plating. Chrome is a very common slide. It's probably the best material to use for a slide, but you'll see nickel slides out there and you'll see raw brass slides out there. On the really old instruments, uh, like really old German trombones, sometimes we use raw brass slides. It all works, um, it's just a matter of preference, but the most popular I think is the chrome plated slide slides, which is what I have, and it is a very good slide. This is my old handy dandy Shires trombone. All right, so that's the slides. So other parts of the instrument, let's talk about uh, valves. I don't have any rotary valve. Well, actually, yes, I do. Almost forgot. All right, so this here is the rotary valve. This is a Yamaha trombone. And I'm not gonna hold it up too much because I'm scared I'm gonna dent something. But that right there, that's made of brass. Now sometimes you'll see them made of nickel, but usually they're made of brass. Now what about pistons? Let's take a look at this old trumpet here. So something interesting about pistons that you may not know is, and I didn't realize this until I started uh, working in the brass repair industry, they're actually hollow. That makes them a lot lighter. So this piston here is a hollow piston, if I can focus on it. As you can see, just for identification, it looks kind of silvery, but it's not silver. It's kind of that uh, grayish color. So that's going to be nickel. So this is actually, I guess this one could be pure nickel, uh, but oftentimes you'll see brass. So, so it's like a machined uh, brass and they'll be nickel plated. On older instruments, sometimes you do see chrome plated pistons. And if they're really, really old, they might be uh, raw brass, but they're not supposed to be raw brass. That's only if it's been worn down enough 
to where the nickel is gone. So that's what's going on there. One that's a little bit less common, there's axial flow valves on trombones. Those are usually brass, nickel plated, uh, but there are some weird materials. They've made aluminum ones before and there's this other material that's really light and it's kind of weird, but I forget what it's called. That's what it is, if I can find it on the internet. All right, so that covers most of the instrument, but there's little parts on your instrument, if you'll take a look, that are not brass. Uh, let's just use, we'll use my old trusty shires here. So, so yeah, so like the bell, you're looking at the bell. This is a, this is a brushed finish bell here. Rose brass, you can tell, because it's kind of rosy looking. But this right around here, that doesn't look like brass necessarily and you would be correct. It kind of looks silvery, but it's actually nickel. So when you see parts like that on your instrument, it's usually nickel, the braces and everything like that. That's made of nickel and your instrument probably has some of that on there. Um, now when it looks shiny like that and silvery, that's lacquer. So let's get into talking about lacquer and different types of lacquer. All right, so what is lacquer? Well, it's basically a transparent paint, essentially. Uh, there's lots of different techniques of putting lacquer on. Some lacquers need to be applied and baked for it to, to work, and, but nowadays they make spray-on lacquer, so it's, it's kind of like a transparent paint. So you see the bell there, how it's really shiny. So I've never polished this. I just use a polishing cloth and just wipe it. That's because it's lacquered. So usually if your instrument is shiny like this and you've never polished it, I am. I can guarantee you it's lacquered. More often than not, straight from the manufacturer, they're gonna lacquer the instrument because it adds a protective coating. It's not gonna tarnish and look crappy in six months. So that's why they do that. Now, old, uh, especially King instruments, used a gold lacquer, it was a tinted lacquer, and it looks kind of like, well, it looks like gold. Some people like that look, I'm not a huge fan of it, but they don't really do that anymore. You hardly ever see tinted lacquer unless you see those like really cheap red tinted ones, or like I think saxophones will have like a black tinted lacquer, but for the most part, it's a clear lacquer. It's important for the instrument because it increases the lifespan and it's not gonna tarnish and go bad. So that pretty much covers everything. You've got your mouthpieces and usually for the most part, they're made of actually brass and they're silver plated. This one's a little bit tarnished, but if you polish it, it'll shine up really nice. And then really quick, there's also engravings. I love engravings, especially old engravings. So the old companies used to hire full-time engravers. So Khan had some really fantastic engravers and we get so many old instruments in the shop that come through and they have unbelievable engraving, completely custom. You don't see custom engraving as much anymore. What you do see is machined engraving and there is a difference. So the Shires engravings, I think, have the best machine engravings. I used to actually think it was hand done but it's actually not because um, every Shires Bell basically has the same engraving. That's when I realized that it wasn't uh, done by hand, which it is what it is. But if you have an older instrument and it has an engraving, it's probably done by hand with these cool engraving tools done by very skilled people. Always really cool to see that. I'm relatively new to the brass repair industry, and I've learned a lot just working on tons of instruments, and I hope you learned something watching this video too. Thank you so much for watching. That pretty much covers what your brass instrument is made out of. And I hope you enjoyed it. Coming soon, I'm gonna do a slide cream shootout. That's gonna be pretty fun, so watch out on my channel for that. Subscribe, and then, uh, yeah, we'll just uh, we'll have some fun with that. So that's it for me, everybody. I hope to see you all again in the Bone Zone. Go practice your instrument. It's good for you, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye. Goodbye.